Welcome back to Proxam, everybody, and today we are going to be talking about Dark Reapers in 10th edition and how they've improved. Now, as you guys remember, Dark Reapers last edition were basically useless. They were almost an F-tier unit, in my opinion. They had some uses, but they were very few. They were extremely expensive, and their abilities just weren't that good. However, in 10th edition, they've gotten a serious boost, and they're looking pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right into it and talk about Dark Reapers this edition. But first, a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be looking at the stats, weapons, and special rules of Dark Reapers. We're going to be analyzing their strengths and weaknesses. We're going to be looking at their combos and synergies and the role Dark Reapers play in an Eldar army. And of course, how to make the most out of them. Looking at their stats first, Dark Reapers have a slower movement at 6 inches. So... They're not quite as fast as other Eldar units. And they have a 3 plus save and a 5 plus invulnerable save. So as far as their toughness goes, not incredibly tough. About the same toughness as a Striking Scorpion. And they are a bit slower. As for their ranged weapons, the Exarch can take an Eldar Missile Launcher, which is just like the normal Missile Launcher. Probably not the best option with this unit, but you can take one. The Reaper Launcher itself has two profiles, one that is good against lighter infantry, infantry with one wound or less, and one profile that's good against heavy infantry with two wounds. And it's also decent against light vehicles because the single shot, the star shot, has strength 8, AP minus 2, which is pretty good at punching through things like orc trucks and stuff like that. All of these weapons, of course, have the Ignore's Cover ability, which is Dark Reaper's specialty. They ignore cover, and as you will soon see, they also ignore some other stuff. The Reaper Launcher is a little bit worse than it was last edition, but because the Reapers are so cheap, it more than makes up for it. And of course, they still feature that classic 48-inch range, so they can pretty much hit anything on the board. The Exarch also can be armed with a Shuriken Cannon, but you're probably never going to actually want to use this thing. It sucks. It's, yeah, just not better than the other options. The range really suffers and so forth. The Tempest Launcher, however, is a pretty decent weapon. It has indirect fire, 36-inch range, 2d6 attacks, blast, strength 4, negative 1 AP, and of course it always hits on a 3+. So this is pretty good. And personally, this is my favorite weapon on the unit because it gives it a little bit of versatility in what it can target. It can obviously target units out of line of sight with this, and it's best used against light infantry. Targets that, you know, your other indirect fire units might not want to deal with. Things like cultists, imperial guard squads, etc. And against these targets, it's really effective, but it's also decent against marines too, just because of the fact that it has such a high amount of attacks. Especially if you take multiple small units of these Dark Reapers, two Tempest Launchers firing at a squad of infantry like a blob of 20 of something can be exceptionally deadly. I especially like this against Imperial Guardsmen because not only are you wounding on threes and hitting on threes, but on top of that, they're only getting a 6 plus armor save, a 5 plus with cover if they have it, and you're getting plus 4 basically attacks on each tempest launcher because guard squads are taken always in squads of 20 pretty much so that's 2d6 plus 8 or 46 plus 8 so again that's 14 plus 8 that's 22 attacks that are going into those guardsmen that is going to be at least half the unit dead or very close to it so not only is this unit good at killing heavy infantry but with the tempest launcher you can kind of branch out a little bit and be able to destroy light infantry as well now, I incorrectly stated before on my Dire Avenger video that they did not have close combat weapons. I just didn't look at the index. I was just looking at the app, which does have an error on it. Dark Reapers, Dire Avengers, things like that do have close combat weapons. They're basically two attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus at strength 3, AP 0, damage 1. So, not great. Obviously, they're not meant for combat, but they can attack back in close combat if they need to. Although, if they're ever caught in combat, they're most likely dead anyways. As for their abilities, they never suffer negative modifiers to hit when shooting. This includes modifiers to hit and modifiers to your ballistic skill. So any abilities that modify that are canceled out. These are only modifiers that you choose. Positive modifiers, of course, you can keep if you want to hit on a 2+. Plus. 
which means these guys are never going to hit worse than a 3+, plus, which is absolutely fantastic and makes them really reliable. As for war gear options, the XR can take the Tempest Launcher, Shuriken Cannon, or Eldar Missile Launcher. I personally think the Tempest Launcher has the best value, but if you want to go the more direct fire route, the Eldar Missile Launcher is very good as well. And there's really no reason to take the Reaper Launcher over the Eldar Missile Launcher if you do want an upgrade, a direct upgrade to the Reaper Launcher. As far as its unit composition, it can be taken in units of 5 or 10, so they did upgrade the unit size on this squad. It costs 75 points for 5 and 150 for 10, which is half the price they were before and extremely cost-effective for the damage they can produce. They're also infantry, so moving through terrain is no problem for them, and this is something they're going to be doing frequently because they're going to be wanting to move up and down ruins. So what are the Dark Reaper's strengths and weaknesses? So their strengths are they have great range. 48 is basically the best in the Codex as far as an infantry unit goes. They have great anti-infantry damage, whether you're shooting at lighter infantry or heavier infantry. They have both covered. They never suffer negative hit modifiers and ignore cover. So your enemy is not getting plus one to their armor save, of course, and they're not going to be able to modify your hit roll. However, their weaknesses are they are a pretty fragile unit. Toughness 3, 3 plus is not going to save them from a lot, and the unit can suffer from line of sight problems at times. Again, this is a unit that is going to be in your backfield. There's going to be a lot of obscuring terrain between yourself and possible targets, so you will suffer from line of sight issues occasionally. As for their combos and synergies, they can take great advantage of plunging fire for better line of sight and negative one additional AP. And again, if they're on top of a ruin, they're going to be able to see more targets, clearly, and they're also going to be getting a negative one to their AP values. Yes, your opponent can see them, but at their cost of only 75 points, they're a pretty good buy in any case, even if they do get shot at. My favorite thing to do with these guys is on turn one, keep them behind a ruin, fire their indirect weapons if they have anything to do, and then later in the game, move them up the ruins when your opponent's forces are more thinned down and have to worry about other stuff and start shooting away at minus one AP. And this way, your opponent doesn't get an easy target in the beginning of the game. Maugun Ra gives plus one to hit, but at 130 points, more Reapers are probably just better value for the cost. Maugun Ra, unfortunately, is one of the more expensive Phoenix Lords, and he really only helps himself out and doesn't really help his squad too much. I know a lot of you out there love Maugun Ra, and we're probably hoping I'd say some good things about him. I think he's cool. I just don't think he benefits Dark Reapers that well by himself. I think, obviously, he's a good model to shoot, you know, six shots, strength seven, AP minus two isn't terrible, especially when he's getting plus one to hit and wound against targets that are below half strength, but it just doesn't really synergize too well with the Dark Reaper unit that he joins. Again, if you do want to go for a big Death Star of him with 10, with Mog and Raw, that's totally fine. Of course, that can dish out some good damage, but again, probably more Dark Reapers would just be better. And just remember, you can almost afford pretty much 10 more of them for the cost of Mog and Ra. Shroud Runners are probably one of the best synergies with Dark Reapers because they can give them lethal hits against a target. So with Plunging Fire and Ignore's Cover, this absolutely destroys enemy infantry. And can also deal solid damage against bigger stuff too, if you need to deal with it. So tougher stuff that is maybe you know, toughness five, that they're going to be wounding on fours, so they're not going to have the greatest chance to wound, Shroud Runners can give them a big boost, especially if you have multiple units of Dark Reapers in the back shooting. And it has some really good Tempest Launcher synergy, because Tempest Launchers do not need line of sight, and they're only strength four, so Shroud Runners can definitely help them hit harder against light targets. A Farseer Skyrunner can also cast a Guide on a bigger unit to reroll hits, but even on a smaller unit, Guide is still helpful, you know, especially if you're using the Tempest Launcher. Again, I know I keep going back to that, but you get 2d6 attacks with that thing, which is 7 attacks. You know, if you're firing at a squad that has more than 5, you're getting plus 1 to that, so you're getting 8 attacks. If you're firing at a squad of 10, you're getting 9 attacks. You kind of get where I'm going with this. Guide is pretty helpful at helping you negate those bad rolls. So yeah, nine attacks on average will net you six hits, but how many of us have honestly been in the position where we've rolled nine dice and like all of them are threes or twos? Or even ones, right? So I mean, having guide there as an insurance policy against those early game attacks is a pretty good deal. 
And because of the fact that Dark Reapers will most likely be in your backline, casting Guide on them is a pretty safe bet that can keep your Farseer Skyrunner safe as well. So there's definitely room for that. Now, I didn't put this here, but Eldrad's Doom ability is also very good if you're going for more shots. Or if you're shooting versus a tougher target, Doom can be very effective for giving you that plus one to wound that you need. And yeah, Doom is only 18 inch range, but if you cast it on something that is like toughness four or something like that, your Reapers will actually wound on a two plus. Which again, is a big deal. That increases their damage significantly. So Doom is also something that can really help you there. Now, the one thing I don't suggest with these guys, because they're so cheap and efficient, and because you probably want them on the board all game long with the Tempest Launcher, is putting them into reserve. I know it may be tempting to want to save your Dark Reapers, put them into reserve because your opponent has a lot of, you know, anti-infantry weapons that can shoot them, but they are going to lose value if they're in reserve for a couple turns. So only use the reserve mechanic with these guys if your opponent has a ton of indirect fire weapons. If your opponent only has like one Desolator unit and you have a couple of units of these guys in the back, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I know it may seem like, oh, I don't want to lose my 75 point unit, but again, you'd be losing a couple turns of shooting with them anyway, and you're more likely to get better value out of them if you don't keep them in reserve. So a great thing to do actually is just have them on the board. If that unit of Desolators doesn't go first, your Reapers can open up on them and probably do significant damage. Again, your Tempest Launchers are decent against Marines as well. You'll probably pop a few of them off on the first turn if you have a couple units. So just keep that in mind and plan accordingly. You probably don't want to put these guys in reserve unless your opponent has a ton of indirect fire that can easily kill them. Okay, so what is the role of Dark Reapers in an Eldar army, and how do you make the most out of them? So Dark Reapers are a long-range, anti-heavy infantry unit that excel at killing one or two wound models and very light vehicles and monsters. So obviously with the star shot, things with toughness seven or less, they excel against. They're pretty good at killing things like the Kronos and the Talos as well, which I believe are toughness seven, and only have like seven wounds apiece. Yes, you can take them in units, but a couple units of Dark Reapers shooting at them can do some significant damage and possibly even kill them if you roll lucky enough. Again, you probably won't roll that lucky, but you could do some serious damage to one of their Kronoses, or Taloses for that matter. If you're able to stack things like lethal hits on top of a unit like that, you're most likely going to be able to kill that unit. Not alone with the Dark Reapers, but in combination with other stuff. They are most effective on top of ruins or buildings as well in your backline where they can get an additional minus one AP and better line of sight to enemy units. This is extremely important and you do want to move these guys up into ruins in turns either two or three to benefit from this and again my favorite tactic to do with these guys is keep them in the back turn one fire their indirect fire weapon with the tempest launcher and then as the game progresses as my opponent has to worry about more and more of my other elements of the army i move the dark reapers up into the ruins kind of sneaky like you know kind of like striking scorpions a little bit and then from the better vantage point in turns three four and five i can unleash absolute hell on my opponent's infantry units Pairing multiple units of these guys with Shroud Runners is absolutely brutal. I love Shroud Runners, and Dark Reapers work perfectly in tandem with them because they're one of the few Eldar units that actually really does benefit heavily from lethal hits. Swooping Hawks already have it. Warp Spiders don't really need lethal hits because they want those devastating wounds, which lethal hits and devastating wounds doesn't match. And also, Warp Spiders just can't get lethal hits because they auto-hit, so there's that. So a lot of ranged Eldar infantry doesn't really benefit too much from lethal hits, except for scatter lasers and those are on bikes. So Dark Reapers are one of the only aspects that truly benefit off of lethal hits from the Shroud Runners, and pairing them together is just absolutely amazing. It's really strong. The other day, actually, I was playing a game where my opponent had a unit of Terminators in some terrain, and I swung up a unit of Shroud Runners by them. I lit them up with the Mark target ability, and I opened up two Dark Reaper units on them. And yeah, I killed four Terminators with that. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot for two Dark Reaper squads, but also keep in mind the Dark Reapers are now 75 points a unit. So if you have two units of those guys firing and killing something that is 200 points for only 150 points, that is a very good trade each and every time. 
So yes, Dark Reapers are extremely cost-effective this edition and can trade up against most heavy infantry targets. Even those Toughness 7 4 Wound Custode units have to respect the newfound firepower of Dark Reapers at the cost that they are. Because at 75 points, even being able to take out a couple of Custodes with Toughness 7 4 Wounds is absolutely amazing. Alright, so in conclusion, Dark Reapers are looking much better than they did last edition. At half the cost, they're extremely cost-effective and have access to some truly great synergies. Plunging Fire and Shroud Runners among them, it's just absolutely brutal if you can combo these together correctly. While they do have some line of sight issues, the Tempest Launcher can remedy this pretty easily in the first couple turns of the game, making for a well-rounded long-range unit. And also, like I said, their line of sight issues can be semi mitigated by the fact that they can move up ruins and get better vantage points later in the game where they will be less vulnerable to enemy shooting. So for all of you who are praying to Isha, please, please let Dark Reapers be good this edition. Isha has granted your prayers. Dark Reapers are in fact one of the better aspect warriors in our index. All right, everybody, that is going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters who have supported the channel over the last months. Your help is greatly appreciated. We just crossed 1,900 subscribers. So, you know, that's all because of you guys and the community is so awesome. Thank you once again so much. Hopefully we can get to 2K by the end of the month. I think that would be a really cool milestone to achieve. I, I really do. And thank you again so much for those of you who have supported the channel by subscribing, liking the videos, commenting, and of course, supporting on Patreon. Which, by the way, if you do want to support on Patreon or YouTube, through a YouTube membership, the links will be in the description for you guys to do so. There is a free trial set up, so anybody who wants to just get into the Discord to talk with other members of the Eldar community about our favorite faction can do so for free. You just have to cancel the trial before it ends. Obviously, I don't want to just put the, you know, Discord link in the description and have all these bots attack us, you know. So you do have to at least sign up for a free trial, but of course you can cancel at any time. There's no obligation for payment. So if you just want to do that, you can go ahead. Or if you do want to support the channel, I would really appreciate it. All right, everybody, that is going to be it for today. Peace out. See you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. See you later.